Hello and welcome back <laughs> to Game Chat. As always, check us out on the Instagram at Game Chat Pod. There's links to us to how to view us there. Uh, and uh, I got Ali here with me. Ali, say hey, what's hey, up hey. to the people. What's up, everybody? And uh, and returning once again, the comedian. Comedian, say hello. What's up, guys? All right. So it's been a slow month, a couple months uh, in the gaming world. Here. And <laughs> yeah, and there's one particular game coming out. We'll get to that later. But I'm excited. Hopefully doesn't get canceled. Um, they have announced a new Star Wars game. Woo-woo. And I'm very excited for about that. And they yes. had already announced one coming out made by Quantic Dream, which is the people who made Detroit Become Human and Heavy Rain. And I'm interested in see how what they direction they go because since EA no longer has Star Wars exclusivity for the video games, thank God. Yes. And but they have announced uh Amy Henning is working on a Star Wars game. And for those who don't know, Amy Henning was in charge of the Uncharted franchise uh, at mm. Sony. Mm. And previously, she they she was working on a Star Wars game, and then it got the boot. But now they announced they're working on another Star Wars game, and she's the lead on this one. So my question for you mm. is, you two, is what would you want to see in another Star Wars game? Uh, I would want to see Battlefront 360 version. Um, <laughs> um, I, <laughs> I, I think that, you know, it's interesting because right now I'm really enjoying in the new Star Wars Lego game. Um, I think it's pretty cool. And yes. I don't. What would I want? You know, I guess what I'd want is I just saw a really great YouTube video and it talked about the first year the Anakin became Darth Vader and it had like that Lord of Vader's comic. I don't know if you're familiar with that version of the comic um, and the story about the pain that he had. I'd like to see that mm-hmm. worked into a video game, like the naturalization kind of let An- like how Anakin dealt with all this like pain that he wasn't necessarily, yes. you know what I'm saying? Like a bad guy. He was just kind of a confused guy. I think that'd be so like a cool. Vader year one. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, that'd be really kind of cool. Um, I also wouldn't mind necessarily more of an origin story of Luke. Like, we just kind of start off at 17-year-old Luke. Like, what did he do for 17 years? He never showed any... Like, you know how, like, Anakin had things where he... The, when um, Qui-Con was talking to him, did you ever do this? Like, did Luke ever have those? Did he ever have, like, moments where he used the Force and just didn't know it was the Force? That'd be kind of cool. Mm. So, yeah. So, game-wise, so, for talking about that new game, I'm pretty sure, I don't know, but definitely, probably, like, you know, an open-world type game. Mm. Because uh, back in the day when it was th- that 1313 game that got canceled, uh I like the concept of that a lot. So I definitely want to see an open world Star Wars game. Um, You know, wherever, wherever it takes place, I I really don't care. Or if you know, you're a bounty hunter Jedi, it doesn't really matter to me. I'll I'll enjoy it all the same. Uh, But yeah, I think that game could have a lot of potential um now in this i am not going to keep this a secret i do i'm not i'm not a fan of the sequels at all so if they could try to distance themselves as much from that that kind of stuff as possible uh i agree i well i i think that's the biggest thing with it like i noticed like when i started playing the lego game and they got all nine movies in it and I was like, that's an incredible amount of movies just in general. And then if you start to think about what if they try to incorporate like the Mandalorian and like all these other side solo, all these other things in there, 
it's just so much. Like I almost would rather them mm-hmm. kind of do like three through six, like do a game for just three through six, do a game for one through three. You know what I'm saying? And just kind of keep them in those books of that. And who gives a crap about, you know, seven through nine? Nobody cares about those ones. Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, I think that'd be kind of cool. But yeah. You know, uh, comedian, you brought it up and I was going to bring it up too. Is that canceled 343 game where it was going to be take place, you know, you were going to be a bounty hunter and it's in like the underbelly of like, the Star Wars universe, you know, like, you know, yeah, like the black market not. shops and mm-hmm. everything and like that. And I would want to see something like that. And then elite, you brought something up too, is maybe see more of an origin of Luke and the, I think it was battlefront two. We saw a little bit, but yeah, I would want to see, you know, after episode six, what Luke does, like his quest, yeah. maybe starting a Jedi temple and whatever that. Cause we did see in Battlefront 2, he started going after um, Jedi artifacts. Yeah. Right. And so maybe we could see that so he could go to other planets. And another thing, too, is if they could do it. And we could, I was thinking maybe making a Han Solo game of exploring more of Han Solo. And then maybe there could be flashbacks of Chewie on Kashyyyk. So we also could get, like, see uh, more of Kashyyyk before it was taken over. Well, it was that's, weird that's too. It's like that, one. and that, and that kind of is kind of funny, as you said, Kashyyyk. Is that kind of leads into Vader Year One? Because that was kind of the whole mm-hmm. purpose of like they were trying to take the Wookies and make them build the original Death Star, and so there was like this whole fight and this whole war on Kashyyyk with the Wookies, and so it's kind of like tie-in. But I really like the idea of the bounty hunter. Like, like they never like. The, do you remember in A New Hope where? Obi-Wan Kenobi says to, well, he's Ben Kenobi at that point, and he says to Luke, oh, Mose Eisley. And he kind of goes off about how, like, wretched, the yeah. most wretched, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, they never really touch it. didn't look that wretched to me. You know what I'm saying? It didn't look that bad to me. I really would like to see more, like, that underbelly of that, like, that was kind of cool. Or, like, uh, what was the other place that was in, I want to th- where was it where Anakin was? He wasn't at Mos Eisley. He was at Mos Eba? Uh Espa, I think. Espa. And I was like, mm-hmm. I would like to know a little bit more like that with a bounty hunter, because that'd be really cool. Like, just like the whole... Anything but... else you want to add, comedian? Uh, not much, yeah. I just, I'm glad that EA doesn't have a complete monopoly over Star Wars anymore. Because they, mm-hmm. I mean, now Battlefront 2, uh, I mean for the past whenever they had their last update it's it's in a good spot now but they they fumbled the ball so hard when that game came out um it did it took took some while to get there yeah it took some while to get there mm-hmm. but it's not a bad yeah. game though i mean we pl- I, i've me and bruner and have played that quite a bit with anthony and it's it's not a bad game i mean there's there's a couple modes on it that are still a little janky but it's it's not a bad game but I think yeah. we all just had that love of 360 Battlefront that I don't know yeah. anybody that disliked that game. And I think so when you have such a high bar of one game, sometimes a sequel just doesn't live up to that. You know, it's just because you have such fond memories of the first game. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, EA has been in a crisis, you know, recently. So now they lose exclusivity to star Wars and then, Battlefield 2042, that game, uh, recently just on Steam, uh, it was reported that like it reached under a thousand players worldwide on Steam. Wow. And then that game has just been like so buggy. And then like they recently just added a scoreboard. So like if, you know, whenever like there was like whatever team domination, whatever, there'd be a scoreboard, you know, when you like capture objectives or get kills. They just recently added a scoreboard and it's just like a basic generic scoreboard. And then I think that company is going to go under unless Uh, it's going to get bought out. Another studio I think was going to get bought out is Ubisoft. Ubisoft. Yeah. Yeah. Ubisoft. 
you know, makers of Rainbow, Assassin's Creed. Mm. <laughs> that's pretty much it. What that's the only thing those are pumping out. And you know, and they were one of the first video game companies to launch NFTs in the game. And that got a lot of backlash for their latest Ghost Recon game. And then they just recently announced they were, they're no longer going to support Ghost Recon. Oh, wow. Well, that so game I was, just think... That, that game was kind of... Gen- I don't know. I didn't like that game when it came out. Like, I was very excited about it. So I guess that's kind of a good starting point of an origin story of the three of us. Is... So me and the comedian met playing Rainbow. That was the game that yeah. we used to play... Oh my God, I can remember the summer that we met. We must have played that game 12 hours a day, every damn day, <laughs> you know? And yeah. so, and then when Bruner, I met him at Friday, we started playing a lot of Rainbow. And it's kind of ironic is that I've played Extinction two times and I don't like it. I uninstalled it and I have the original <laughs> Rainbow Six still on my Xbox. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I, 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 I think they dropped the ball on that. To be honest with you, Rainbow Six is arguably the greatest first-person shooter game t- team format ever created. And the biggest thing they could do with that is just kind of keep putting stuff into it. Keep having seasons, keep having new characters, keep having new maps, and get away from trying to recreate it with putting aliens or something else. It's not Halo. It's not let it be its own little standalone thing because yeah. everybody I know that's played that game loves that game. And it's kind of exactly like we were just talking about battlefront is sometimes when you try to do a newer version of the same game, it just doesn't work. And that's what I feel about rainbow six. And it's, I feel that way about assassin's creed too, is assassin's creed got so far away from what they were. To it's True. like, oh my gosh. It's like I just was looking at possibly buying Valhalla. I went and looked at reviews. Not good. <laughs> so I'm like, I think I'll just keep my 60 bucks in my pocket. You know, it's it's crazy. I mean, you think about like Black Flag that they had of Assassin's Creed, how good a game that was. Or how yeah. good some of them early Assassin's Creed games were. And... It's crazy. So maybe you're right, Bruner. But hopefully one of them can go out and buy Bend and redo Days Gone. That'd be kind of cool. I mean, do you have anything to add on the state of Ubisoft? No, I, I agree. I think they over time, they've gotten progressively worse with their games. Pro, uh, you know, probably because they just don't listen to the community enough. Because, you know, I used to play... You know, Assassin's Creed 3, Black Flag. Uh, You know, I played a little bit of Unity, but I used to love the Assassin's Creed games. And then I played Odyssey. And I love the the Greek atmosphere, you know, the gods and goddesses and whatnot. But they just, like, they lost touch of core Assassin's Creed things. And, you know, you have the rainbow, you know, extraction. I had no interest in that at all whatsoever. And, you know, even for rainbow, what made me stop playing rainbow was that I first got into it because I thought it was going to be like a CSGO type, you know, Counter-Strike clone almost in a way, like slow paced tactical shooter. And they started throwing in a bunch of abilities that weren't realistic necessarily, you know, and they, they turned it into like a sci-fi type thing almost. And so I lost interest in that game because of that. Mm -hmm. But well, well, that was exactly kind of what had me originally for a long time. I got away from COD for that same reason. When they started doing black ops two, when you could run on the walls, remember that? Yeah, And I was like, okay, I'm done with it. And I only came back to COD when it went back to like a format of like realistic 
you know what I'm saying? Ordinary like people yeah. stuff. And it's, it's kind of funny is they don't listen. They do not listen to people and they think they can kind of go off. And I, I, I keep coming back to that extraction. I didn't even have to pay for that. It was a free game for me. And I've already uninstalled it. Played it twice, uninstalled it. And the only thing I can compare it to is like early Halo. Mm -hmm. Is I think of it like Halo, like what am I doing out here with aliens? You know, it's like you you had like, you go from this really cool story of like defusing a bomb or get, getting a hostage out to now I'm fighting aliens. Yeah, It's like, that's weird to me. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, I was like, you're like, I, pl- I've been playing. Well, I remember getting rainbow day one and playing with my friends and like seeing the evolution of the game when like people would like, uh, like crouch, you know, when they, you know, when they entered the building and like, it became really stealthy to now like the toxicity of people running around, you know, and like trying to spawn kill. But I think the problem with rainbow is like, like you said, like, the operators they got like too ridiculous like yeah. it either got too ridiculous or they're just repeating what current operators they have like hibana is a copy of the original thermite you know what i mean yeah yeah and then they're like uh what's the bald girl the bald british girl with the shield is just montane you know what i mean just well, defending well, montane absolutely yeah. and i agree and i think what they should do is like I said, is I don't necessarily need more characters, more operators, more maps mm-hmm. would be kind of cool. Just create yeah. maps. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And to be honest with you, it's kind of funny is when I bought it on the PlayStation, I ended up buying just the first two seasons of operators because mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. the only ones I ever use. I don't use any of the ones that came out past yeah. that, even though I have them on the Xbox. And to me, as I kind of play that game, like I remember the first time I played that game, The coolest thing you could do with that is the first time you could take your gun and peek around a corner. Yeah. Yeah. The tilt. And I was like, that is awesome. That was like awesome. Mm -hmm. And it's like little things like that. But I agree. Like, and I remember the time, I don't know. I think I was playing with a comedian and I got a, I I, I got a, I I wiped out a team. I got a team wipe with, 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 with fuse. Yeah, I, and I thought that was like the coolest thing in the world. Like, oh my god, this guy literally just blew up a whole room, killed all everybody with this thing, like hockey puck thing. And uh, mm-hmm. it's like, I don't know. I think that that's always going to be one of my favorite games, and I think they just messed it up. So it, I think it might be right about Ubisoft. That that's kind of an yeah. interesting I, take. And and you brought up the maps too. Just make more maps and like. M- just and ease up on the operators and then instead of like i think they kind of ruined it a little bit is when they were redoing maps like oh. um and it took out the, some of the favorite. base they took out like and then they, they, took they, they house. remodeled house yeah, yeah. it's like, anytime you wanted a 1v1 be like all right private match pull up at the house because exactly. everybody knows the house exactly and it is like and they got rid of boat they got rid of the boat for a while it's like mm-hmm. come on <laughs> and it was I don't know I I agree with you I, I it's plane they got rid of plane for a while remember that they pulled plane mm-hmm. off that was the best all yeah. you need was glass and just sit outside on the wing and pop everybody yes <laughs> yeah it's like I don't know I it, but I, I I look at it and I'm kind of like I don't understand why they do that in games like you have that game is still like you go to Xbox and they show like top sellers. Rainbow Six, original Rainbow Six, is still one of the top sellers on Xbox at the Microsoft Store. There's mm-hmm. people still paying sixty bucks for that damn game, and it's like eight years old. It's like, why yeah. do you need to change it? Like, I don't know. It that blows my mind. But mm-hmm. what was I say? And then we we brought this up like in another episode back then, but now all three of us are here. Like if Ubisoft didn't make Rainbow, I think they'd be bankrupt. Because all three of us, how much have we spent in oh. in Rainbow? Hundreds. I've literally spent hundred dollars, <laughs> hundreds of dollars on that game. I made a joke Absolutely. one time. Yeah. If I don't even include the cost of PlayStation version, I think I paid four hundred dollars just on my Xbox and buying operators, seasons passes, 
and just like that's the one game everybody that here knows I'm not really I don't really care about skins. That's the one game I like bought skins for. Like yeah. bought different like guns and stuff and like that's the only game I've ever done that for. Um that's not true. Friday the 13th I did buy the Halloween pack one time or the bikini pack or whatever cool. they called it. It's like when you think about it other than Rainbow 6 the really the only other franchise Ubisoft has that has any weight behind it is probably Far Cry. But then Far oh, Cry yeah. 6, Far Cry, Far Cry 6 was kind of like a flop, too. yeah. It was yeah. horrible. So Bruner got me in a Far Cry. So and literally I must have played Far Cry 5. So we did we ended up game sharing um our consoles on PlayStation and I think he bought Far Cry 5 initially. And yeah, because it was like nine dollars on PlayStation Store, and I'm like, Ali, I got this game called Far Cry. I think you'll like it. I played it, <laughs> and I've played that, and I've 100 percent of that game probably five times. So then I'm like, oh, I want to play a different Far Cry. So I bought like the Far Cry five point point one, where it's the two sisters, and mm-hmm. I don't remember mm-hmm. what they called it. And then I ended up buying Far Cry four. I didn't like Far Cry four, and then somebody said, oh, Far Cry three was really good, so I bought that, and I didn't like it. Um, but so I had a lot of hope for Far Cry six and then I'm like, it's too damn complicated. Mm -hmm. It's too complicated. It's like too much of like building this and like, oh, well you have to have this certain pack that shoots out the baseballs or whatever. It's like (laughs) too much. It's like, just make it like where it was because I said, I've always said Far Cry five is the greatest a lot of times I would just go on there and take my 50 caliber and just go hunting and just like, like hunt, you know, deers and stuff. And like, just kind of like almost make it like a hunting game. Yeah. And it was very did relaxing. Fishing? Yeah. I did that too. You know, the golden trout and everything. Great fishing and it was mechanic. like, it did. And it was like, cool. Like, and you could sell these golden trouts and rainbow trouts and stuff. And it was like, okay, cool. I thought that was so cool. And literally, I would go on there for hours and just roam around doing that. And Far Cry 6, I just don't like it. I don't like it. It's like mm. also like too much sitting in a boat going across from like an island to an island. Like, mm. you know, like the nice thing of Far Cry 5 was they were all connected. And like you would kind of just like go up the road and all of a sudden now you're in that in the sister's world or you're over in this guy's world or whatever. And but yeah. That's that's right though. I forgot yeah. they made that too. Yeah, yeah, I, I forgot too. Comedian, I think that the good, like the charm of Far Cry Five was the whole story is it's a cult leader in Montana and you're trying to take him down. It and can I'm be realistic. Like, yeah, because yeah, because I'm like, what the fuck's going on in Montana? You know what I mean? Who like knows? anybody know anybody in Montana? Like literally, that could be happening right now. We don't know. I don't know anybody in Mon- I, You know what? I think that's I don't know anybody in Montana. I don't. I honestly don't. I think that was one of the few states I don't know somebody from. We must have met somebody from Montana playing video games. Yeah. I mean, we've got people in Canada that were like just basically ass bump from Canada. So, I mean, it's the same as Montana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's crazy. Yeah. And then Far Cry 6, I know, I remember they went like heavy on the marketing because they got the oh. guy from Breaking Bad to be the main villain. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then. And then you brought that up. That was a flop. Uh, Assassin's oh, dude, Creed Valhalla. They, you brought they didn't up. only get. That they was didn't a only flop. get. They only didn't get the guy from Far Cry uh, from uh, Breaking Bad. They also got the guy from Machete guy. Remember, he was doing yeah, tacos. Uh, yeah, there was Danny like a little Trejo. thing where you could have Danny Trejo making tacos. It was like what? What? Are, that was so weird. Mm. Mm. And then they also made um, Immortals: Phoenix Rising. And then they're like, oh, yeah, that's going to be the new Breath of the Wild. It's it's exactly like Breath of the Wild. And then the game flopped. Hmm. I never played it. And then. Yeah. yeah I mean, you can. you can, And then Watch Dogs 2 flopped. Watch Dogs 1. Yeah. I mean, Watch Dogs 3. I'm sorry. Watch Dogs, Another, Watch Dogs 2 flopped. was a good game. Watch it's Dogs like they, 2. Watch Dogs 1 and 2 is a good game. It's, a, it's as they progressively get worse as they can make more of them. Which is. They should kind of realize that. Like. <sighs> I'm not you know, going to thinking I now. I didn't even know there was a Watch Dogs 3. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> I, I, I think I think half the world out there doesn't know, and that's the problem. It's like, and then so me and the comedian were kind of having this talk the other day, and 
so me and the comedian went, gosh, I don't know, about 18 months without playing games because he went to the PC world. And I was like PC years ago and then kind of went away from it and then kind of played around with it a little bit. But then I went heavily into consoles again. And now the comedian was like, you know what? I'm thinking about just going back to my console. And I'm like, really? Explain to me why. And then I'm going to let him explain to you why the, he's kind of coming back around a console yeah. world. So basically, long story short, why why would I spend $2,000 on a PC f- for it to be good for a year or two, top notch, f- for then it to just fall off massively and it's like, oh, well, if you want to be at the top of your game on PC, spend another $3,000 on a graphics card when I could just buy a console and play thing virtually all games at the same performance, regardless of when they come out. Because now my 1080, my 1080 in my computer is like considered low tier now. And, you know, everybody on PC, the PC community, oh man, my game, oh, my game is running a little bit low on frames. Oh, just, just, just get an upgrade, dude. Just gotta, gotta better, gotta get a better graphics card. Like, yeah, like I can just shell out $3,000 every time that they come out with a new card. And the problem with the with the GPUs right now, problem with the graphics cards is there's a shortage because everybody's mining, okay? So all the cards are being eaten up. Now, my PC's got a 3090 in it. And so that's top tier graphics card. I was lucky enough to be walking through a store that had one. That's the only reason why I picked one up. They're impossible to get. They're impossible to get. And then it's not only just a graphics card. So now I can remember when if you had 6 GB of RAM, that was a lot of RAM. Now, Mm -hmm. basic entry level, you got to have 8 GB. And that's not even like fast. If you want to have a good system, you're looking at... 12 to 16 GB. And I just saw a system that a guy made on, t- uh, on YouTube and he has 64 GB of Ram. And I'm like, Whoa, that thing's gotta be flying. Right. But yeah. then you think about like hard drives and you think about like, I can remember, I can remember we didn't even have 128 K was a big drive. You know what I'm saying? And now we're in the terabytes world that um, I think there was a Linus just made a system. If I'm not mistaken, (laughs) that he did like some ridiculous build and it was like 60 or 80 terabytes. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, dude, and then he's got like a petabyte server going on too. Yeah. He's making a petabyte server. Yeah, He's making a petabyte. And I'm like, that's just like ridiculous storage. It's like so much storage because everything's mainly cloud-based. The only people that are needing storage are gamers because they want that instant access without the lag from the cloud. And it's like, holy camoly. And editors, I guess editors still need it because they're putting the video, the the raw video. But it's like, holy camoly. And you're absolutely right because I don't know how they do it, but I, I have a PS4. Now, how old is the PS4? What, I eight years, six, ten years? Something. I mean, it's a few yeah. years, right? I mean, yeah. Still runs very decent. PS5 yeah. would run better. I, I know that. But still runs very decent. When I went to the Xbox Series X, the biggest thing I remember saying to Bruner was, wow, I'm amazed how quick everything opens. Mm-hmm. Now, the only reason that's mm-hmm. super quick is it's a solid state hard drive. Mm-hmm. It's, it, you know, it's, but if you look at the, if you look at the hookup, the funny thing about, you look at the build of an Xbox Series X and Microsoft has done this from day one. If I went out and built that exact same system, that closed loop system that they have, that's a nine 
to a thousand dollar build. They're yeah. selling that for four hundred bucks. They're taking a loss on every one of those. They always have, and where they make their money up is the games. Okay, but to me is you think about this like think about this comedian is so you got that system and you got your ten eighty and you got this and you got that and is your ten eighty pushing out four K is it pushing out eight K? No, but you know what? I look over and I'm like, boy. I got a 70 inch 8K TV. Exactly. That Xbox pushes out what my TV is pushing out. I'm getting 1080 on that bad boy. You know what I'm saying? It's I'm getting like high, super high def. The money, the money that I, I spent roughly two thousand dollars on this computer. With that money, uh, I could have spent. I would have had money left over if I would have gotten. A PS5, Xbox Series X, and a 4K TV. I would have had, and I would save money. Yeah. I can't get 4K on this $2,000 computer. You know, 